I am. I'm live. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is my first time actually managing to get this to go live. Welcome to Tea Fairy Storytime. Today I have a very special book for you that came in from the author R.L. Walker. It is called Planting Dreams. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. This is a fun, lovely story. It says, R.L. Walker is a teacher and mother to twins who are, garden, who are garden and nature enthusiasts. She is from Lithopolis, Ohio, and she's published five books and can't wait to share her love of gardening with others. Join Amelia and Alex as they learn how to plant and grow a pollinator garden to help the bees and butterflies with their friends and family. Discover what to plant and what fun things you can do with flowers and the garden. And you can find this on Amazon and on Kindle. It comes in a paperback, as you see, and it also comes on Kindle. And you can read along with me if you go to Amazon.com Planting Dreams by R.L. Walker. And it is illustrated by, I should mention the illustrator because these illustrations are pretty cute, um, illustrated by Neil Parks. And you can see there's all the little kids. This book belongs to me. <laughs> it was sent to me by the author. I am very blessed that she was kind enough to send me a copy. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Audrey Hepburn. To all of those who love to garden, and most especially my grandparents, parents, and my children. Look at all the lovely flowers in the park. And so many butterflies and bees, exclaimed Amelia to her friends, nodding in agreement. Oliver responded, flowers are the bees' needs. They provide food for them, and the pollinators, in return, help the plants thrive. Alex said, like how many lunch helps us survive? Like how much our lunch helps us survive? Sorry, sometimes fairies make mistakes when reading. All the friends looked through, looked thoughtfully, and Amelia chimed, let's help feed the bees and make our own beautiful colored garden. The twins couldn't wait to explain their plan to their family. Mom, we're going to feed the butterflies and bees, but we need help planting the seeds, Alexander explained. By all means, please share your dream, their grandmother replied. They put their heads together. We want to make a garden full of flowers. Our friend Oliver told us that sunflowers and poppies are very helpful. While looking at different seed packets with their grandparents, Amelia pointed towards one, some poppy seeds, while Alex was looking at all the varieties of sunflowers. You see him in the seed store looking at all the seeds? Alex held out cheerful yellow sun sunflowers, aromatic lavender, and milkweed that he took from the seed tower. Great choices, dear. There, these will look and smell lovely, their grandmother replied. And Alex, the zinnias and cornflowers are beautiful additions, and the sage, roseberry, and mint are great herbs as well. Their mom showed them how to plant the seeds in the dirt, making sure that they were not too deep or too shallow. These flowers need lots of sun. That is why we chose this plot, away from tree shadows. Remember to follow the directions on the back of the package, their mother encouraged. Each one used their hand trowel to plant their rows of beautiful colored flowers. Alex said, remember, Seeds like moist soil, so we need to water them and the seeds until they are big enough and the roots can reach deeper water. Whether it was, has rained or not, the best way to check to see if your plants need water is to check the soil. If it is muddy, you watered too much. If it is damp, you are good for the day. And if the soil is dry like sand, you need to give it a good drink. Alex asked, did you know that bees and other pollinators are responsible for pollinating over 90% of the world's food and that they're dying off in large numbers? Yes, replied their dad. 
That is why we have planted all the flowers and started a new beehive here. A queen bee can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day, but not all survive to adulthood. So one new hive can make a huge difference, and it's important to not knock down a hive. If the bees are a bother, then a local beekeeper can, be, can relocate them to a place they can survive and thrive. The bees help us by pollinating our fruit trees and vegetables and provide us with delicious honey, Amelia explained. On this note, we actually had a beehive here in the neighborhood mm, a couple months ago, maybe more like four months ago. And the neighbors actually called some local beekeepers who came and picked up the bees and their hive and took them home. So you can do it too if you need to. There are places and people to call. And they're experienced with bees. Oliver exclaimed, wow, you guys really did it. Your backyard looks even better than the park with all the different flowers, butterflies, and bees. And you can see it any time. Was it hard work? Not really. The hardest part was deciding which seeds we wanted to plant because I wanted to do all of them. We spent a day planting them, a few days watering the plants, and now we just get to enjoy, Amelia responded. Leah replied, plus look at how many pollinators you helped feed. Maybe I will ask my parents if I can do a small pollinator garden too. Dad loves not mowing this area. If you need to bribe him and your mom will love all the fresh flowers, Alex giggled. Amelia and Alexander have cut some lavender, sunflowers, and brilliant red poppies making baskets of bouquets. Grandma is going to love these. They will add some cheer to her kitchen counter and brighten her day. We should not delay. Both run off carrying rainbows in their arms. Honey, let's harvest some. We all have bee safety suits so we don't get stung. And I'm using a smoker to keep them from smelling danger and keeping them calm. Then I can collect the honey without upsetting and harming the bees, Dad explained. Wow, this is amazing. So much yummy honey. I can't wait to put this on grandma's biscuits and all kinds of baked goods. Leah looked curious and asked, what can we make from dried flower petals? All kinds of things. We can glue the petals on paper and make our own bouquets that can last all winter or put them on the outside of candles. Put them in bags to make the house smell nice. That's called potpourri. Put fresh ones on cakes and cook them in other foods. Ooh, there's some flowers that are edible, like nasturtiums and lavender and mm, what else? Calendula. Ooh, that's good. Amelia said, as the group worked on some flower crafts about cooking them in other foods, you can put them in bread and decorate cakes with them. I've even had lavender ice cream. It's good. Now that the sunflowers have had their time in the sun, laughed their dad, here's a tip. We can pick the dead flowers and roast the seeds to make a delightful snack. Who likes sunflower seeds? I do. Their mom laughed at the joke and helped them get things ready to bake. After they finished roasting them in the oven, they all got to try some. These will be great for baseball games and hiking trips. Don't forget to save some seeds for each plant that you like so that you can plant them again next year, their grandma exclaimed. What about all the other seeds, asked Amelia. Grandma looked thoughtfully and replied, you can either harvest them and give them to the birds this winter or let them dry on the plant and let Mother Nature take its course. If you wait till it is snowing, you can see them better. But either way, leaving some seeds for the birds is quite helpful indeed. R.L. Walker is a teacher from Lithopolis, Ohio. She received her BA in anthropology and her MA in education from Ohio University. She's a wife and mother to twins. She loves to read, write, garden, hike, and travel with her family. She got into gardening as a child with her parents and grandparents, and she currently has a small garden with her twins and hopes to turn it into something larger once they are more of more help. And then it says in the back of the book here, Lesson plans and activities, dry flowers for crafts, 
potpourri, sensory bottles, flower petal, petal paper mache. Ooh, that sounds fun. Dry seeds and used to make bird feed by rolling a pine cone toilet paper roll, pine cone or toilet paper roll in peanut butter, then the seeds and it makes them the seed bombs and seed paper. Oh, or you can make seed bombs and seed paper. Ooh, that sounds fun. Seed paper. Pick flowers to make various displays. Draw, paint the flowers. Record how many plants come up, their daily growth using a measuring tape. How many different pollinators visit your flowers while you watch? Keep a journal about your growing experience. Make some delicious treats. Make a chart of all the different types and colors of flowers. And here's some recipes. Roasted sunflower seeds. Roll sunflower seeds in a bag to separate the shell from the seed. Then place in a baking tray and toast for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. You can store and eat or blend into sunflower seed butter. Mmm, one of my favorites. Biscuits. Two cups of all-purpose flour. Three teaspoons of baking powder. A half teaspoon of salt. A half cup of shortening. One cup of milk. Mix them. Then shape into biscuits and bake at 350 degrees for 8 to 12 minutes. Drying flowers. Lay flowers between the pages of books or lay them out on a newspaper in the sun. You can also pick up, there's special kits. I got one off of Amazon that you can dry flowers in the microwave and it'll press them. Um, I also have a wooden press that has like little knobs on the corners that you can tighten the wood down and I put pieces of cardboard and wax paper in between and then I can layer the flowers in there and it presses a whole bunch of flowers all at once. Super fun. Makes a lot of neat stuff. You can make all kinds of cool crafts out of dried flowers. In fact, I will post some stuff on the Facebook page in a little while of ideas of things to do with dried flowers because I have some experience in that. I'm probably also going to plant some seeds soon. So I will post some video of planting seeds soon as well, both on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, I have another story that I thought I would share, but I think I'm going to do it in a separate video on YouTube. In fact, I might share two. On video on YouTube, I'm going to share Carlos and the Squash Planet, and then I'll share that video to Facebook as well. And I'm also going to read, let's talk about being lazy. Because sometimes, especially this past year, I've been a little lazy. I'm, I'm not sure about you. But we need to work on it because we need to get back to work and do all the stuffs. So anyway, thank you, R.L. Walker, for sending in your lovely book. I enjoy it very much. I will probably read it at events and story times in the spring every year from here on out. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I had fun doing this live Facebook thing and I'm videotaping for YouTube at the same time. So two at once. It's kind of tricky. All right, folks. Have a good day.